vapor canister vent solenoid. Air from the charcoal canister comes in from this side and vents to this side. We were replacing it because we received a PO442 and PO456 small evaporative emissions leak. A Dorman replacement part with the link in the description below. There are six subframe bolts and two rear shock bolts that need to be removed. So those will take a lot of time without an impact. This is a DeWalt DCF 899 half inch impact. Obviously not for tightening, but to make the nut busting a little bit easier. To remember to use impact sockets. There's a link in the description below. Three subframe bolts on each side and one shock mount bolt. You don't have to remove the wheel, but I highly recommend it because it gives you more light and more access. So there's a bolt up here. Bolt number two is right here on this uh, portion of the cross frame. Bolt number three. There's a hole right on the lower link, which is right here. Goes straight up and straight through until you get to that spot right there. Bolt number four, this is the uh, 17 millimeter rear strut bolt. Okay, so three bolts out on this side, three bolts out on this side, plus a suspension bolt on each side for the shocks. And now we can carefully lower the frame. The box portion of the cross member is supported by a jack. You should use a stand if you have it in one position for a little while. So we release the jack and lower this about three to four inches to give us the access we need. So we're looking at the exhaust of the solenoid. This hose is the exhaust vent hose. Comes up from the filler pipe, down and around. And you could just pull it off and that gives you access. Once that's pulled off, you could remove the electrical connector and then you could remove these two 10 millimeter nuts being very careful not to strip them. And remove these from both sides, remove the hose on the front side, and then you should be able to remove the entire vent solenoid well over three inches dropped and that gives us tool access for a 10 millimeter six-pointed socket on both notice that we got one off um, the nut was rusted but it wasn't seized thank goodness so we got this 10 millimeter off here and we've cocked it gently um, to get the next 10 millimeter off then we'll take the connector off and then we will take the canister side uh, hose clamp off once we have better access. So now we've removed it. I recommend removing the two bolts first. That gives you a lot more room to gently remove the electrical connector and gently remove the hose clamp. Both of those could cause more issues if those are broken. We went back and forth, got the hose clamp off, really gently eased it off just by twisting. Last thing to do is the connector. Just be really gentle when you take each of these things off. There's our old canister purge solenoid. See if it closes all the way by testing it with a 12 volt battery from the engine. The vent side over here. Normally this is open, but if it closes, you shouldn't hear any air going. So it's activating, but we need to check if it's leaky. It lags when you reopen it. And when it's closed, it still leaks some air. So it is faulty. Just install the new one in the reverse process of the old one. And push it. And next up, we got that wonderful hose clamp. You attach the hose clamp. Um, we use a non-OEM hose clamp because the other one broke. It's on the solenoid side. Here's the little lip of the solenoid, a little flared lip. So we tighten it down and then we'll put this back on its two studs. Here's one and here's the other. So we'll carefully put on our 10 millimeter nuts. And these don't have to be super tight. Um, we'll just torque them flush and hand tight because again, these will rust. Raising the frame, there's a rubber grommet that looks like a cone. It's gonna help align the frame back in. Perform all steps in reverse and tighten all bolts with a torque wrench to the torques in the description below. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe. Thanks, good luck, and have a great day.